To do a two-sided box, remember you only need a couple of triangles, right? You pick where your vertical is, and you complete out two triangles. Simple stuff. To do a three-sided box, you actually need uh, double that. You need four triangles, right? So we go horizon line, finishing points. We pick our vertical, and we're gonna go below the horizon line this time. So here we have to do one triangle, two triangles. This establishes a two-sided box. Then we go three triangles, four triangles, cut, cut, and now we have our three-sided box. So we got three-sided box here. There we go. So we got one, two, three. But it takes four triangles to get there, right? Next. Let's talk about setting up like a sort of city scene. So let's say we have a vanishing point here and a vanishing point here, right? So our, I always like to pick my um, my primary corner first, right? Here I'm looking at this this corner. This is the this is the main idea, right? I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm going to sketch out where these are. Okay, so here I've set up uh, set up the potential for a building, right? I'm going to go ahead and create that building. So here, I'm going to come in with my extra color, just emphasize this building as opposed to the construction line. Most people. Um, when they begin a uh, linear perspective, they'll actually um, use a separate, like two separate colors. One for creating all the construction lines and a second to go back through and to um, go in with the lines that you've decided on that are correct. A lot of people use just pencil and then ink uh, after that. Some people will use um, like a blue pencil and then go on with a, with a black colored pencil. Um, it's up to your preference. Now, one of the things that I recommend to keep things kind of clean is that you focus on kind of one side to do your layout of buildings and then draw off front to back so that you overlap them front to back. If you go the other direction, you get crowded with construction lines and it becomes just a giant mess. So we'll put another building here. We'll send this building all the way back to the vanishing point. Cut it off there, cut it off there. And we'll go back to the vanishing point here. So we're actually not going to go all the way. We're just going to, you know, float and make sure that we're getting that general gist of the direction, right? Then we can go in, re-emphasize that this is the building that we care about. These are the lines that we care about. And we can throw in another one. This one we'll make really tall just for the heck of it. Go way, way high. Boom. Real skinny. And we'll go down to the vanishing point. Down towards the vanishing point until we hit another building and stop. Then here we're gonna need to cut this building off with another vertical and stop at our previous building. Then make sure that we give this building a bottom right there. And then we can go in re-emphasize this and there we've got a little city street scene that's starting to happen and then if we want to go real nuts with it we can then get into a little bit of value and value in perspective you know of course that has to do with lighting but it also has to do with just clarity right so we can say Say the light is kind of coming from over here, right? Um, we can get in with value. I think we use the, the purple that we abandoned. Um, 
and we can essentially just differentiate one side from the other with a little bit of uh, with a little bit of shading, right? So I'm not really using shading as shading here. I'm using shading as a tool to differentiate one thing from the next, right? Because that's really all shading is, right? That's all value is. It's just you know, it winds up creating a sense of light, but what it's really doing is just helping you differentiate one side from the other. And there you have it, right? Maybe we can go in with a little yellow for the front side and just define the front side. That'll be kind of silly. 